Are you coming? This is one of those gates you have to step on to open. This field over here, you can see Inca trotting through it. it. Has delicious succulent grass in it. So I'm gonna turn the yews and lambs out in this for a few hours every day. And then I'll get them to come in here for some nuts because we're basically going into a drought. So I've got to extend the pastures for as long as possible. So, come on girls, they're going to love this, back into rich, huge amount of herbs, the first thing they're going for are the dandelions, the dandelions are, even their stems that don't have anything on them, look at that. The dandelions are the first things that any sheep or cow goes for as soon as they get turned into a fresh field. That is how rich and delicious dandelions are, is that the sheep love them so much, it's the first thing they head for. So dandelions in a field is not a weed. It is essentially a high mineral content that the sheep love. Look at her chowing down on those dandelions there. Going straight for the dandelions, they all are. All going for the dandelions. They have a mineral lick. They have as much of that as they want, but the first thing they go for in the field are the deep-rooted dandelions. Now the lambs are going for grass. They're just going for sweet grass. Aggie's down there, she's just going for grass. But most of them are going for the dandelions. You can see there's a good few of them still in the field in their seed forms. So any livestock farmer that tells you dandelions are weed don't know what they're talking about. In this particular field, I planted, sowed some um, salad brunette. So here's some baby salad brunette. That's clover, but you can see the young salad brunette. So I'm hoping that the sheep won't overgraze my recently sold, sown salad brunette. It's just coming into its young leaves. You can see loads of it here, because that's another deep-rooted herb it's really, really good for uh, bringing up minerals and vitamins from deep in the soil. But you can see they're enjoying walking out into this field. A very diverse sward. You can see all the daisies up there on the side of the hill. Daisies, dandelions, 
speedwell, all kinds of different herbs are in this field. Now, Oreo Bloom. Yeah. He's made a beeline for this section here. So, oh, it's fresh sown grass. That's several varieties of grass I sowed on a, underneath an old a hay bale that we um, fed the sheep on. This yellow is, flower here is a self-sown rapeseed. This would have been, a uh, bird would have brought that in. So that's not a, that's a um, agricultural plant used for oil. So, see, look, still heading for the dandelions. literally just eating the dandelions. And that was eating a dock. She just took a mouthful that's a dock, and look at that. That's a chunk of dock she just jumped, t took a bite out of. So they eat dock as well. But they're gonna enjoy their afternoon here. They get to be here for a few hours. And then I put them back in the field they were in. And this way I uh, make the grasses last longer because they'll just be eating in here. They won't be doing too much lying down. You can see all the dandelion heads. There's a dandelion there. So they're still flowering in the field. And then the daisies, loads of daisies, and then loads of clovers. And that's one kind of buttercup. There's several kinds of buttercups. But during the evenings, they'll be going back into that field over there where they can lie down. So I'll rotate between the two, grazing and nighttime accommodation. And that will make the grass last a lot longer through this drought that we're having. And time we need. We need rain, but we have to extend the value of the grass for as long as possible.